What's up everyone, Rob from Ishimoto. Today we're going to install our direct fit oil cooler kit in your 2016 Plus Camaro 2.0 Turbo. Let's get started. Tools recommended for installation include T15, 7 and 10 millimeter sockets, quarter inch drive ratchet, driver and extensions, one inch, 27 millimeter and 22 millimeter sockets, half inch drive ratchet and extension, panel tool, flathead screwdriver, diagonal cutters, pop clip pliers, 10 millimeter wrench, dash 10 fitting wrench, a torque wrench, a strap wrench, and Chevy approved engine oil. Installation time is two to three hours. Installation difficulty is a three out of five. Installing an oil cooler adds additional maintenance to vehicle ownership. All oil line connections should be regularly checked for leaks and retorqued. The oil filter center bolt adapter must be retorqued every time the oil filter is removed. Set the vehicle on an automotive lift or raise it with the jack and place it securely on jack stands. Refer to your owner's manual for safe lifting points if you are unsure. Loosen the clamp that secures the air intake to the turbocharger inlet. Disconnect the CCV hose from the intake by sliding the locking tab over and pulling the hose off the port. Disconnect the mass airflow sensor and release the harness from the intake tubing. To release the connector, slide the red locking tab up, depress the black tab, and pull the connector off the sensor. Separate the intake from the turbocharger and remove the intake by lifting upward. The airbox is held in by three pegs and grommets. Remove the two pop clips that secure the upper edge of the front bumper. Remove the six screws that secure the upper edge of the front bumper. Do not remove the screws that secure the black plastic alignment tabs. Remove the five screws that secure the air diverter to the driver's side of the vehicle and remove the air diverter. Repeat this process on the passenger side. Remove the eight screws that secure the lower edge of the bumper. Remove the four screws and six bolts that secure the splash panel to the underside of the vehicle. Then remove the splash panel. Remove the front wheels from the vehicle. It is possible to perform this installation without removing the wheels, but it makes accessing everything much easier. Remove the seven screws and one pop clip that secure the driver's side fender liner to the vehicle. Unseat the liner from the fender and pull it back to expose the front of the wheel well. Remove the four screws that secure the bumper to the front edge of the fender. Remove the two screws that secure the bumper to the fender and loosen the inner screw. Pull the upper corner of the bumper away from the fender to release it from the vehicle. Release the two tree clips that secure the lighting harness to the vehicle. Then release the harness connector from the body and disconnect it. To release this connector, slide the red lock tab out of the connector and depress the black tab. Remove the seven screws and one pop clip that secure the passenger side fender liner to the vehicle. Unseat the liner from the fender and pull it back to expose the front of the wheel well.
remove the two screws that secure the bumper to the fender and loosen the inner screw. Remove the four screws that secure the bumper to the front edge of the fender. Pull the upper corner of the bumper away from the fender to release it from the vehicle. Lift the top edge of the bumper to free it from the alignment tabs. Remove the front bumper by sliding it forward off the nose of the vehicle. Remove the pop clip and screws that secure the rear splash panel to the underside of the vehicle. Locate the hardware in your kit. There are two different size bolts. One of the larger bolts will be used to attach the horn to the relocation brackets. The other large bolt, along with the plastic washer, will attach the cooler to the crash bar. The smaller bolts and nylock nuts will secure the brackets to the cooler. Locate the horn assembly on the crash bar and separate the wiring harness from the stud that secures it. Then remove the stud. Locate the small bracket with the threaded insert in your kit. Lift the horn assembly off of the crash bar and install the bracket in its place. Orient the bracket so the threaded insert faces towards the passenger side and secure it with the stud you've just removed. Then reattach the wiring harness to the stud. Place the horn assembly on top of the bracket you just installed and secure it with the provided hardware. Remove the two pop clips that secure the air diverter to the ducting. Remove the bolt that secures the bottom of the driver's side support strut. Locate the large bracket with the threaded insert in your kit. Attach this bracket to the passenger side of the oil cooler with the provided hardware, but do not fully tighten it yet. Locate the angled bracket in your kit. Attach this bracket to the driver's side of the oil cooler with the provided hardware, but do not fully tighten it yet. Locate the last bracket in your kit. Attach this bracket to the forwardmost hole on the bottom of the driver's side of the oil cooler with the provided hardware. Thread the bolt in, but do not fully tighten it. Slip the Nishimoto oil cooler and attach brackets under the crash bar while tilting it up to clear the AC condenser. Align the angled bracket with the support strut and thread in the bolt that originally held the strut. Align the driver's side bracket with the hole in the crash bar and secure it with the provided bolt and washer. Align the lower bracket with the holes in the air diverter and reinstall the pop clips to secure it. Now that all the brackets are attached, go back and tighten all of the bolts to secure the cooler to the brackets. Place a drain pan underneath the vehicle and remove the oil filter from the engine. Wipe off the mating surface with a clean rag. Lubricate the gasket on the Mishimoto sandwich plate with fresh engine oil. Then install the sandwich plate to the engine using the provided center bolt. Orient the sandwich plate so the threaded ports face forward and then snug the center bolt. Install the two provided fittings to the sandwich plate and tighten them completely. Remove the push nut that secures the ducting to the driver's side of the radiator and separate the ducting from the plastic stud. Locate the hose in your kit with two straight fittings. Pass one end of this hose through the ducting on the side of the radiator. 
Locate the hose in your kit with a 45 degree fitting. Pass the end with the 45 degree fitting alongside the first hose you just ran. Attach the 45 degree fitting to the port on the oil cooler which is closest to the center of the vehicle and tighten it completely. Attach the straight fitting to the port on the oil cooler which is closest to the driver's side of the vehicle and tighten it completely. Lead both hoses down through the engine bay. They should follow the curve of the forwardmost AC line and pass in front of the stabilizer bar. Locate the silicone sleeve provided in your kit. Slip the sleeve over the stabilizer bar where the oil lines cross under and secure the sleeve with the short zip ties included with your kit. Lead the oil lines over the steering rack back to the sandwich plate. Attach the lines to the fittings on the sandwich plate and tighten them completely. Adjust the position of the sandwich plate so the oil lines flow smoothly. Then tighten the center bolt to 35 foot-pounds with a torque wrench. Reinstall the oil filter. Locate the heat wrap included with your kit. Be sure to wear gloves when handling this material as it contains fiberglass and can irritate your skin. Install the wrap over the oil lines where they run past the AC lines, then pull off the protective strip and squeeze the wrap to engage the adhesive. Secure the oil lines to the AC line using the long zip ties included with your kit. Then snip off the excess zip tie. Reinstall the air intake. Slip the fresh air duct of the air box into place under the radiator support. Install the intake hose to the turbocharger inlet and tighten the clamp that secures it. Align the pegs on the airbox with the grommets in the body of the car and push the airbox down to engage them. Install the CCV hose to the intake. You will hear an audible click when the hose is engaged. Connect the mass airflow sensor harness to the intake tube and reconnect the mass airflow sensor. Lock the connector with the red tab. Check the oil level and top it off as needed with GM approved engine oil. Start the engine and allow it to idle for a few seconds. Then shut off the engine and check the oil level once more. Start the engine and allow it to warm up to operating temperature. While the vehicle is warming up, inspect all of the oil line connections, the sandwich plate and the oil filter for leaks. If oil is leaking from any of the connections, shut the engine off. Loosen the leaking connection and retorque it. Once the vehicle is fully warmed up, shut off the engine and check the oil once more. Reinstall the rear splash panel to the underside of the vehicle and secure it with the original hardware. There are two tabs at the rear of the splash panel that must slip over the subframe support. Apply painter's tape to the bottom edge of the front fenders. This will protect the paint while you reinstall the front bumper. Install the front bumper. Align the pins on the bumper with the holes in the fender as you slide the bumper over the nose of the vehicle. Lift the top edge of the bumper over the alignment tabs. Check the fender gap on both sides and then remove the masking tape.
Install the eight screws that secure the bumper to the front edge of the fender. Install the screws that secure the bumper to the bottom of the fenders. Reconnect the lighting harness. Lock the connector with the red tab and secure it to the vehicle with the integrated tree clips. Push the driver's side fender liner back into place and make sure the edges are fully seated behind the ducting. Then secure the fender liner with the original hardware. Repeat this process on the passenger side. Install the pop clips that secure the upper edge of the front bumper. Install the six screws that secure the upper edge of the bumper. Install the splash panel to the underside of the vehicle and secure it with the original hardware. Install both of the air diverters to the vehicle and secure them with the original hardware. If you forgot which side is which, look on the underside of the diverters. The driver's side will be marked LH and the passenger side will be marked RH. Install the four screws that secure the splash panel to the fender liner. Install the eight screws that secure the front edge of the bumper. Reinstall the front wheels. Torque the lug nuts to 140 foot-pounds in a star pattern. Now that you have the oil cooler kit installed, it's time to take your Camaro for a test drive. Don't forget that the sandwich plate adapter bolt should be retorqued every time you perform an oil change. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you head out.